welcome. I'm really, really glad that you're here. My name is Linda Aldridge. I am a volunteer Medicare instructor here in the Silver Valley. I've been doing this for about 12 years and I am an absolute volunteer. I answer to nobody. Nobody pays me to do anything. I have free classes that start the last week of October and they continue for four weeks. We spend a little over an hour a week on different topics. Today, you're just going to get part of a brief introduction of Medicare. Medicare is very, very complicated. If you think you understand Medicare after looking at your Medicare and you book, I'm afraid that you're wrong. It took me years to understand it. Now this time of year, in the mail, you should get your own copy of Medicare and you book. You need to hang on to this. You will get a new one each year. I want you to look at the Medicare diagram. I've, the whole thing is going to be pictured there then as we go through each section. Only the section we're talking about is going to be highlighted on the side of the screen so that you're going to be able to read it. First we start with Medicare Part A. You notice that's a circle in the very center and that's because everything else in Medicare is built around that. Medicare Part A became law in 1965. Unfortunately, from the day that it started, it was underfunded and exceeded the cost estimates. But that's no surprise to anybody, uh, especially people in North Idaho. We understand that. There is no cost for Medicare Part A for anyone who has 10 years of work credits. That's 40 quarters or a spouse has been working and paying into Medicare. This covers care and some medications while you're in the hospital. It covers skilled nursing and hospice care. It covers skilled nursing facilities when certain criteria are met for time. You have to have been in the hospital first and then you have to go into skilled nursing. Each benefit period has a deductible, which is the only hospital charge that you're going to get during the time you're in the hospital. It will last up to 60 days, and it's going to cost you around $1,400. Now, you'll notice today I'm going to be rounding off a whole lot of dollar figures, and that is because the dollar figures for the next year never are published until the end of November. And so they really, it doesn't matter. Each year they go up three to five dollars. It's going to cost you. That's what you're going to have to pay. There's no comparison any place. So we might as well just speak in round numbers. Anytime you're still in the hospital after 60 days, then you have to start paying some co-pays. Now, what's really important for you to know about Medicare A it does not include any of the doctor's charges while you're in the hospital. This would be your own doctor, the radiologist, the pathologist, the anesthesiologist, any of the other different professionals that are going to be treating while you're in there. Part A does not cover them. They're all going to bill you separately. So, what do you do? When you signed up for Medicare, you had this option to sign up for Part B Medicare. See where it's changed up there in that little square box? Part B Medicare, you actually have to turn down. It comes automatically. This pays for doctor services in and outside the hospital. It includes the radiologist, the pathologist, the anesthesiologists, all these other folks. It pays for outpatient services after the yearly deductible is met. Uh, the yearly deductible is around $200 per year. And after that, Part B is going to pick up 80% of all of those charges. Drugs are not covered with the exception of 80% of the cost of clinic drugs 
such as chemotherapy. The cost varies by income, uh, and it is required if, in order to have TRICARE, Medigap, or Medicare Advantage plans. And it runs about $150 now. And remember, you have a deductible of $200. And now you say, oh my gosh, what am I going to do if it doesn't cover everything? I'm, I'm already paying $150 a month. Then you have two different options. Well, actually, you have three. Okay, you can be really filthy rich and be self-insured and say, hey, no problem. I will be happy to pay these extra, this extra 20% out of pocket. I don't care if it happens to be chemotherapy and that's thousands and thousands of dollars. I'll be happy to pay it out of pocket. Well, another option is you have some other potential benefits. Uh, perhaps you've worked for a company that has retirement medical benefits that you can carry into, in, into retirement. Employee or union provided. Uh, veterans benefits. Uh, the VA and TRICARE. But remember, you still have to pay for Part B first. Uh, Medicaid, uh, tribal health. Um, all of these have different rules. And they cover differently, and you need to understand them. But they can help pay for things that regular Medicare, Part A and Part B, do not pay for. Or if you're really lucky, they pay for everything that they don't pay, and there's nothing out of pocket. Some of you, you know, 30 years ago, weren't thinking about your retirement and who was going to pick up the costs that Medicare Part A and Part B didn't pick up. So that's when you look at the bottom part of this chart, and you see we have two different choices. There's a Medigap or Medicare policy in which you pay a private company to pick up all or part of these additional charges. And in the, at the end of this, you will see the link to the Sheba website that shows you how much these plans cost by company. Believe it or not, there's a hundred dollars or more difference for exactly the same plan from different companies. Most insurance agents aren't very happy that I point people towards these charts and I print them out in my class so that you can see which company is going to give you the basically the same service for the least amount of money. Now, Medigap and the supplemental insurance are really good deals because anybody who accepts uh, Medicare has to take your supplemental plan or your Medigap plan. It's the same thing, just two different words. No matter where you go, that will be accepted. If you're going south winter, going to winter down in the south where it's warm, they will take your plan. If you are really sick and you need to go to the University of Washington or you need to go to the Mayo Clinic, they will accept your plan. Um, they are really great plans. The only disadvantage of them is the cost. But you won't be paying out of pocket. The other choice is what you see all the advertisements on on TV. And that is the Advantage plans. You've all seen the advertisements. Oh, free, you pay nothing. You can get rides here, you can get rides there. You'll pay dental insurance, they'll do vision. Uh, don't bet on it. They vary greatly in price from free to probably all $250 a month. They may or may not cover the prescription drugs. You're still gonna have a copay, but they vary county by county. Don't pay any attention to the ads on TV. They run ads on TV because they make money. They can change in price drastically from one year to the other. They can drop your county and not be there at all. There's all kinds of things that you need to know about Advantage plans before you look at the TV and say, oh, isn't this wonderful? 
And then just because they offer something, let's say a free gym membership, that doesn't mean a gym in your area is going to accept what little bit of money they pay for it. There's a lot of doctors who will not accept Advantage plans or will only accept certain Advantage plans. Um, there's some hospitals sometimes that won't accept a particular Advantage plan. This is one of those things that before you decide this is for you, you need to really understand. It can be a good choice. It's a lot better choice than not having something to pick up these additional charges, but it may not be the best choice for everyone. And we spend a lot of time going over this when you come to class. You need to know when you are looking through the book, Adam, they have come in several different kinds. They come in an HMO, uh, which you have network providers. Anytime you have to go out of network, you're going to pay more money, and you have to have all of these referrals and authorizations. You have what's called a PPO, and that, again, you pay more if you're out of network. And rarely we see a plan that is a, a PFFS, where the provider, the individual pro provider can choose to accept or choose not to accept. You notice that we did not talk about prescription drugs. Prescription drugs are, of course, very important. Prescription drug coverage is one of these things that is driven by contracts with pharmacies and the groups that provide the pharmacies with the drugs each year. So you really need to check your prescription drugs each year. You need to get a list of the drugs you actually take from your pharmacy. And the pharmacy is very, very happy to print this list out for you. The whole name of the drugs does not appear on the bottle. And there's a link on the, on the video here where you can go in to medicare.gov and search for the best prescription drug plan for you this year on the, at the drugstore that you wish to use. For instance, one of the plans was on contract with two of the drugstores here in the Valley. For the last two years, they had the cheapest price. This year, they are not one of the preferred pharmacies, and the drug prices there for the same drug that last year only cost you a couple dollars, it's going to be a whole lot more because this year they're not a, pres a preferred pharmacy. You need to check each year. If you take my class, you can come in with the list from the pharmacy and I will run it for you and show you which one is going to be the, the most cost effective for you this year. And even better, if your computer letter, we'll show you how to do it yourself. You can do it on a smartphone, you can do it on a Kindle. You can do it on a computer. It is supposed to be self-service. But it's very, very important that you do this each and every year, or you're going to be real surprised when you walk in in January and find out your prescription drugs have tripled in price, and you didn't do anything, and you didn't make any changes. Every year, you need to check. This is absolutely critical. There's long-term care insurance. Medicare does not cover long-term care in a nursing home or a rehabilitation facility. You need to realize that that is not part of Medicare. If you want insurance for that, you have to get that separately. So every year, this is what's important, between 15 October and 7 December each year is what's called open season for Medicare. And that is when you can make changes to your plan, which will all come into effect one January. It's complicated. I hope that you will take the time to either come to my classes or deal with Sheba or find somebody who actually understands Medicare to help you through this, who is concerned about helping you 
you know, rather than necessarily selling you something. It's about helping each other and teaching you how this whole system works. So thank you, and I hope to see you in class. Don't worry, I'm going to put those dates and that information back up again here soon. My name is Nathan, and I'm the information specialist for the Community Library Network. I'm also the guy who filmed Linda for this production. And after we were done filming, I sat down with Linda and I had a little chat with her. One of the things that she wanted to make sure people understood is that while many people who need these services are computer literate, there are many who are not. So if you are not completely comfortable with computers, consider bringing someone who is to Linda's classes. They'll be able to go through Linda's classes alongside you so that you both understand what's going on uh, when, when you go online to these resources, and then they can help you get situated with what you need. That's one reason that Linda would like to see a lot of younger people, caretakers and family members uh, of, of people who need these services in her classes. Additionally, I'm going to cover a few more resources that you can leverage when you're trying to figure out all this information. So let's dive into that now. And at the end of that, I'll bring back up Linda's class schedule as well. The first resource I'm going to cover is Idaho Sheba. Linda talked about Idaho Sheba several times throughout her presentation. This is the number that is on the back of the Medicare and You book. These are people that are going to help you through the Medicare process, and they're hired by the state to do that specifically. Linda actually has some experience as someone who has worked for Sheba. So their number is 1-800-247-4422. That's 1-800-247-4422. I'll also include a link to their website in the notes at the bottom of the video. The other resource Linda wanted to make sure that you knew about was Medicare.gov. Now this is a website that acts as the hub for all of your Medicare needs. And you can find a lot of information on this website. Linda goes into much more detail about the website in her classes. An official message from Medicare. Finally, the last thing Linda wanted me to cover was the Medicare.gov Drug Plan Finder. So this is in the Medicare.gov website, but this is that resource that she was talking about where you go to check your drugs against your plan. So it's very important that you know about this resource. And the link to this one is also in the notes section of the video. I hope those resources have helped you out. And I'm going to put Linda's class schedule back up on the screen for you. And I hope that you take the time to go and get this wonderful amount of information that Linda puts together for this class series. Thanks for watching. And as always, we hope to see you in the library soon.